Good morning, church, and welcome to Aviano Baptist Church. Now, if you're new to ABC in the last month or so, I feel like I probably should introduce myself. My name is Barry Cole, and I'm the pastor here at Aviano Baptist. And for the last six weeks, my wife Jeannie and I have been here in the United States. We came here so that she could get the back surgery that she needs. But of course, because of the COVID-19 situation, we've not been able to do that. And so we're on our way back to Italy. In fact, if you're watching this on Sunday morning, while you're watching it, we are in an airplane somewhere over the Atlantic on our flight back to Rome. And of course, we're, we're disappointed uh, that we couldn't get the surgery. But we know that God's got an incredible plan for all of this. And we're very excited to be back together once again with our church family. Now, for those of you who are new to ABC, what we want you to know is that as a church community, we try very hard to come alongside you, to help you to grow and to know and love Jesus more, so that together we can lead others to love him, and they too can see the difference that he can make in their lives. Now, before we dive into the message today, I want to say a huge thank you to Gary and Suzanne Preston. I know that their time in Aviano wasn't what they expected. It wasn't what any of us expected. But I know that you were incredibly blessed by them. And so, Gary and Suzanne, if you are watching this, thank you. Thank you for spending time becoming a part of our church family. Thank you for pouring yourself into our community. And thank you for standing in the gap during these difficult and strange times. Now, what I want to do this morning is I want to start a sermon series that we'll be doing over the next several weeks that I'm calling Lessons from a Lockdown. And I want us to take a look at some of the, the biblical lockdowns, some of the times that, of imprisonment, some of the times of, of isolation, to see really what the Word of God has to say to us in times like this. Because I think it would be a lost opportunity if we look at this time of lockdown and, and isolation and we look at it just to get through it, and then when we are through it, we just say, okay, now it's back to business as usual. And so I want us to start this morning with a time of extreme social distancing. Uh, there in Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was taken out into the wilderness and tempted. And so if you've got a Bible with you this morning, or if you're joining on an app, or you're look, joining us at New Version, open with me to Matthew chapter 4. And I just want to, want to read verses 1 through 11, and just spend the next few moments seeing what are some of the lessons from this extreme social distancing that God has for our lives. So you follow along as I read the text this morning. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted forty days and forty nights, then he became hungry. And the tempter came to him, and he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city. And he had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will give his angels charge concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, On the other hand it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Now I am generally a big idea preacher. And that means what I like to do is is pull out the, the main idea of a passage. I call it the big idea. And this is what I think the big idea that God has for us in this passage, especially right now. That God can use times of isolation 
times of challenge, times of difficulty. And God can use those times to reveal some of the most powerful spiritual lessons about himself. I mean, we see that in Scripture. He did that with the children of Israel as they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. In Galatians chapter 1, we're told that God took Paul off the scene for a period of three years and no doubt revealed himself in powerful ways to Paul. And then here in Matthew chapter 4, God reveals some powerful truths for us that can help us in these times of lockdown, in these times when you're in your home and you feel especially isolated. Now, we could spend a lot of time in this passage really mining all of the the golden nuggets of truth that are in there. But I I do want to keep these video messages fairly short. So I do encourage you and your family to spend some time, open the, the scripture to this passage, maybe later this afternoon or sometime during this week. Read this passage together. Discuss it together. And to help you do that, I'll, I'll send some, face, some questions to post up on Facebook, some discussion questions, so that you can spend some time talking about what else God has for us through this passage. But this morning, I just want us to notice a few quick things, a few quick thoughts about what powerful lessons God can teach us through times of isolation. And the first one is this, that God has a purpose for what is happening. You know, it's tempting at times when we have trials or difficulties or or extreme challenges. It's tempting for us to try to let God off the hook, so to speak. To think that he has nothing to do with those difficulties or when things become chaotic or they just seem beyond control. But I I want us to notice something. In that first verse, just a little phrase, it says this, that Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. The Spirit of God acting out the will of God the Father led Jesus out there into the wilderness. And Jesus, God in the flesh, knew exactly where he was going. He knew exactly why he was going there. See, God has a purpose for what he allows, and he has a purpose for what he initiates in our lives. Now, the purpose for Jesus' temptation, it wasn't for him. That was for us. See, the Father had no doubt that the Son would succeed. The Holy Spirit didn't doubt the outcome of what was going to take place out there. Jesus knew exactly how things were going to turn out. And frankly, I think even if if Satan were to be honest, which he is not going to be, but if he were to be honest, he even knew how that situation was going to turn out. See, God took him out there so that we would know in a very real and a tangible way that Jesus was tempted in every way, just like you and I are, yet without sin. And that we could see Right before us, as we read that account, we could see how he fixed everything that Adam destroyed there in the garden. See, God has a purpose for everything that he allows and everything that he initiates. And the challenge for us in difficult times, the challenge for us right now, is to remember that God has a purpose so that we'll intentionally be looking for what that purpose is. Now, last week, Pastor Gary challenged us all to think about what are one or two things that are now going to be your new normal after we come out of this lockdown and this isolation. What things in your life have changed? Maybe it's increased time you have in the Word. Maybe it's, it's increased time with your family, a more intentional prayer life. But what are, what are one or two things that are going to be your new normal? And here's what I'd encourage you to do. Share those things on Facebook or, or on Instagram. We've been in the States for the last month and a half. And there's a 24-hour news cycle here in the States. 
And I got to tell you, it's always a, a doom and gloom story about the, the COVID-19 situation. And it can get depressing. But here's what I would like for us to do. To, to flood our social networks with some of the wonderful things that God is doing in our lives. The, the things he's calling us to and challenging us to because of this COVID-19 situation. And I also think it's a great way for us to, to create a little accountability. We all need that. It's so tempting when we come out of this to just say, let's just go back to business as usual. And we need to hold each other accountable so that we can remember what God's purpose was for us in all of this. See, God has a purpose for everything he does and everything he allows. And the second thing I want us to notice in this passage is that God is trustworthy when nothing else is. My brother-in-law had the coronavirus. And I don't think that he and my sister would mind me sharing their story. He was very sick. He spent about a week in the hospital. And of course, my, my sister was, was concerned. She was worried for his health. And as her and I were talking and, and praying together, she almost blurted out, do you think God still loves me? Now, I don't share that by way of judging her. I think we've all probably had times of extreme difficulty, extreme challenges, when we've asked a similar question to that. God, do you still love me? See, that's exactly what the enemy does, though. He tempts us to, to question God when we are at our most vulnerable moments. The scripture says here that he came at Jesus when he was hungry after 40 days. Now, I just want you to think for just a moment. How desperate would you be after 40 days to get something to eat? And that's when the tempter comes at Jesus. This had gone on for some time. And he tempted Jesus to, to question if the father maybe was somehow holding out on him. Now, Jesus doesn't fall for it. And starting there in verse 4 and all the way to verse 10, Jesus responds to each temptation like this. It is written. What a wonderful reminder. It is written. You know, God revealed himself through his word so that we would know who he is. We would see him at work in, in the lives of his people. And we would learn about his character and his nature through all of that. My sister and I had a, a wonderful time of looking back at it is written. Because we simply can't trust our emotions, especially in times of challenge. We have to come back to the truth, to the solid foundation of God's word. Because we don't always understand why. We don't always understand when God is going to work or when he's going to act or how he is at work. We don't always have the answers to those questions, but we can understand who God is in the midst of those times. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, Paul said this to Timothy. He said, I know whom I have believed in. Now notice he didn't say, I know what. I have believed. He wasn't talking about doctrine or a set of beliefs or a set of rituals. He said, I know whom I have believed in. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have trusted him until that day. See, we have to remind ourselves and come back to the, the trustworthiness of God when the things around us are spinning seemingly out of control. And our trust and our anchor is the character and the nature of God. And let me just offer a quick word of advice. Use this time, maybe when your schedule is less hectic. Maybe you have far more discretionary time on your hands. And use this time to draw closer to the Lord through his word. Maybe you want to join in our, our version Bible reading group. 
so that you can hold each other accountable. You can share some thoughts and read thoughts of how God is speaking to other people through his word. And if you're interested in getting involved in that, just shoot me a note. I'll put my, I'll mention my email address here at the end of this video. Just send me a note or, or send me a Facebook message and let me know you want to join. I'll send you the invitation. God is trustworthy when nothing else is. And the third lesson I think he has for us, especially in this time of isolation and social distancing, is that his timing is perfect. The other thing it's easy to do when things don't make any sense is begin to question God, especially as this isolation drags on, and to ask him, what are you waiting for, God? Why haven't you done something? Why haven't you ended this? When are you finally going to act? There's something else that's interesting about this account. It happens there in verse 11. And it's the timing of when the angel comes. It says the devil left him and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. You know, they came as soon as the temptation was over. As soon as it, Satan had thrown his worst at Jesus and he stood firm through it all. That's when the angel came. You almost get this idea of of God the Father watching very closely the events as he, as he peered out from the throne room of heaven. And as soon as the moment was over, at the exact right time, he dispatches the angels to go and minister to his son. See, God is not blind to what is happening. He sees every single person who has the coronavirus. He knows about them. He sees everyone who has died from it. God knows at this moment and at every moment where every single microscopic virus is. And Peter said this, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. He said, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Now, I don't know when that little while is going to be, but I do know that the God of all grace will himself restore and confirm and strengthen and establish us. And he will act in his perfect way and in his perfect time. There are a lot of challenges that we're all facing from this coronavirus. But there are also a lot of lessons from the lockdown. Be on the lookout for how God is at work, working his purpose in your life and in those around you. Remind yourself and remind yourself often that he alone is trustworthy in ways that nothing else can be. And know that his timing is perfect. And he will act in his way and in his time. Well, I hope and pray you have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for coming to church, even if it is in your jammies and your fuzzy slippers. Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. If you have any questions, you want to talk to someone about your relationship with Jesus, how you can know him in a personal way and have your sins forgiven, Email me at pastor at avianobaptist.church. I'd love to talk with you and share with you the love of Christ and how you can know that for certain in your life. Or if there's some, someone you need to talk to, you've got some issue in your life and you need someone to talk to or pray with, contact me either by email, on Facebook, by WhatsApp. Contact one of our deacons and we'd love to come alongside you. God bless you. Have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you again in person very soon.